Hello everybody and welcome! If you have played Coral Space Program at least for a few hours, you have probably already had a few accidents, crashes and unintentional crew fatalities. In this video I list the most frequent mistakes probably everybody makes, so you may avoid them in future missions. Here we go! First up, parachutes. Parachutes save lives. At least if you have enough to set your vehicle down safely on the ground. Or have lowered your re-entry velocity sufficiently in order for them to even work. Anyhow, the real problems start when you forget to add any at all. Yeah, there's this nice little feature in KSP that reminds you to add them, but let's be honest, who looks at that? On the other hand, I already managed to land stuff more or less safely without parachutes. And I am not talking about powered landings. Interestingly, heat shields offer some sort of dampening and you can also use aerodynamics to slow down your descent. Also, the pumpkin reigns supreme. No reaction control system. Maybe it's just me, but almost every time I build an SSTO type vehicle or a really small spacecraft, especially probes, I tend to omit the RCS modules. And let's face it, you can dock without them, but it's a lot harder, especially with larger vessels. So make sure to add those RCS thrusters and add enough monopropellant to fire them. We all have better things to do than spend hours lining up to docking ports. As a side note, get the docking port alignment indicator mod by Navyfish. I can't imagine docking anymore without it. No antenna. Ever since Kerbal Space Program 1.2, the concept of remote control has been properly introduced into the game. If you want to remotely control a probe or spaceship, you need to have lines of communication established. Every probe body has an antenna included, but the further you are away from home, the weaker the signal gets. Many a times have I launched a mission only to have it get stuck dead in the water due to me forgetting to add an antenna or using an appropriately sized one. Also, don't forget to include an antenna on your resource scanners. I always seem to forget those because in my mind it already has an antenna. The big one, the scanner one. Anyhow, don't forget to add another one. Also, batteries. Which leads me to my next point. Underestimated power demand. Basically, this is similar to forgetting an antenna. If your probe core runs out of power, your vehicle is dead in the water. This holds especially true for ion vehicles. While you can still extend solar panels or start fuel cells when you bring along a pilot, if you go purely remote, this is no longer an option. Also, sending your space plane up with rapiers, which don't generate electricity when firing, and forgetting to add enough batteries or solar panels is a recipe for frustration. For some reason I nowadays fall into the trap far more often than in the early days of KSP. Why? I'm not sure. Increased senility maybe? Control from where? More parts, more problems. Well, depends on the parts, if we're being honest. What am I on about? Let's take my Halloween pumpkin video again. Or the orbital drop pod. Or the emergency escape system for the collaboration station. In all of these cases I have used a probe core as the main control point. However, as soon as you add a pilot to the mix, the game on occasion switches control to the manned part. That means if you don't make sure you select control from here on the probe core, you could end up pointing the vessel in the completely wrong direction, which could lead to rapid unplanned disassembly. Now this is why quick saving often can be a lifesaver. Weak wheels. Remember my purple pain mission? It already took ages to drive the Oddwalk rover around EVE. In addition to that, I had to repair the rover wheels every few hundred meters because I apparently underestimated the strain put on them. Also, your planes tend to wobble if you opt for the more lightweight landing gear. This can cause some discomfort during the actual landing. So make your vehicles sturdy. No ore canisters. 
Speaking of sturdy, ore might be sturdy, but having no place to put it can be a hassle. The ore refinery mechanism added to KSP offers a great way to extend your mission range and introduces a whole new array of possibilities. Me, however, I really don't like to hoard ore, so I try to keep the ore tanks on a minimum and use them only as a temporary cache between the drills and the ISRU. Due to that, I am prone to forget to add an ore tank from time to time, since I really don't care about them in the first place. And usually I find out hours into the mission when I have landed and I'm out of fuel. Yay! So remember to add those ore tanks, even if you just want to process that delicious ore directly. And now, you didn't think I would forget, did you? Check your staging. Have you ever launched a rocket and wondered why your rocket separated before you intended? Well, you probably had a staging mishap. With increased complexity of your vehicles comes increased staging complexity. So if you need a 15 stage booster to get your 5 kiloton payload into orbit, you better check those stages twice. Thrice. What replace? Winters? Anyhow. Things are made more difficult by KSP messing up your staging all the time in the editor whenever you add new parts or move them around. The only way to get around this is to be really diligent when it comes to setting up your rocket before launch. And that's it, these are my 8 stupid KSP mistakes. What did you think of the list? Let me know in the comments below. Please don't forget to enter the shadow zone by subscribing to my channel and by following me on all of these social thingies. And as always, thanks for watching, goodbye.